Thanks for the introduction. So in this, in this uh, talk, I'll present you a new framework to construct pseudorandom functions. And we were also interested in understanding how hard it actually is to construct PRFs. So this is joint work from Nico Döttling from Aarhus University. So this is the outline of the talk. I'll start with a little introduction, then I will talk for a while in the middle, and then I will end at some point. So as I said, this talk is about pseudorandom functions. So PRF are one of the most fundamental building blocks in cryptography. So the definition of PRFs basically says, you have an efficient distinguisher D that talks to a black box. And this black box is either initialized with a random function, so with a truly random function, or with a pseudorandom one, depending on the random bit B that is chosen at the beginning of the game. And the distinguisher has basically to tell whether it's talking to the one or the other primitive. <clears throat> PRF has many, may have many, many applications out there. The first one, of course, is private key encryption. Given in PRF, we can convert it into a CPA secure scheme. And if we add a, a MAC, we get a CCA secure one. And other applications of PRF are, are MACs, of course. And it's also widely used for de-randomization. So our framework basically proceeds in three steps. The first one is that we start with a given PRF that only works for a small domain, so say for a poly-sized domain. And then we convert this, this small domain PRF into something that we call a bounded PRF. So PRF is bounded, or we say it's a bounded PRF, if the number of queries that the adversary will ask is bound in advance. So you can basically think of a PRF as the computational anal analog to, to otherwise independent functions. And given this bounded PRF, we convert it then into a full-fledged PRF where we don't know the number of queries in advance. And the very cool thing of our framework is that, um, that, that everything will be tied. So the first technique that we're looking at is, is a technique that we call domain extension. And the second one is a technique that we call on-the-fly adaptation. And as I said before, going from, from a small domain PRF to a full-fledged PRF will be tied. So tightness here means we don't lose anything, we don't have any loss in the security. And our framework has, has several implications immediately. The first one is, is for the Banjari, Pike, and Rosen PRF. If you apply this framework just directly to this PRF, you will have a better PRF with the weaker security notion. And if we use specific number theoretic assumptions that hold in certain groups where, where DDH or Kalin is hard, we actually get PRFs that are more efficient and, and have a tighter proof of security based on DDH and based on Kalin. So this is what we would like to do. Let's start with looking at the very famous, at the famous uh, tree construction of DGM. And this is mainly base, the basis for most of the PRFs that we know. So the construction is well known and actually, and actually extremely elegant. It basically converts a length doubling PRG into a PRF. And the idea here is that the binary presentation of the string that you then enter in the PRF defines the path through the tree. So how does it work? We will also need it afterwards to understand where the security loss in most of the schemes is. So basically, it starts by expanding some string by basically doubling the length. And that's the property of the PRG. You're taking a random string, you can double, you can expand it. In this case, you double it, and the output will be guaranteed to be pseudorandom. And this you, you, you then do recursively down to the tree. So you take the left half again, you expand it and get a two-end string, and you do it on the right side again. So to compute the PRF, basically the binary string defines the path then through the tree, which means if you would like to have the value of the PRF evaluated on zero, you start on the top, you basically go on the left side again and again. The security proof of the scheme then basically involves two hybrids, two hybrid arguments. The first one goes over the layers of the tree and the second one over the number of queries. So let's take a, take a look at it. So basically the first hybrid, the first hybrid allows you to, to go to the first layer and you substitute the outputs of the PAG by random value. Right, so we are here. And by the properties of the PRG, it basically says that this modification here, here we have uniformly randomly chosen strings. This modification does not change the success probability of the adversary. And then you're going to the next layer. You're replacing the pseudo random values again, 
And again, by the, by the, by the pseudorandomness of the PAG, this modification does not introduce any significant, uh, any significant loss. So in summary, the proof consists of two hybrid arguments. The first one basically goes over the layers, and here we have n steps. And the second one goes over, over the number of queries. So in total, what we have is n, n times q steps. And this basically means that the security loss that we have there is also n times q. So this basically means if you start with an adversary that has an advantage ADV, what you'll have afterwards is a reduction with an advantage ADV over n times q. And our question was, can we, I mean, is this, is this basically inherent for the constructions that we know? And if you look at the, at the schemes that, that are out there that we know from, from number theoretic assumptions, most of them follow this blueprint. So of course, the first one now, Rheingold, very elegant, very beautiful, follows this blueprint as well. The Luco Waters PRF turns this DDH-based scheme into one that is based on Kalin and follows the scheme as well. The same holds for the Bunjari, Pike, and Rosen PRF based on, on LWE. And there are also very few exceptions. One is based on, on uh, pseudorandom synthesizers, which is highly non, uh, non-tied, and the Dolis Jampolsky PRF basically is tied to a very specific number theoretic assumption. And this was the motivation of our question, of, of our work. Can we, do it, can we do it a little better? And our starting point is the bounded PRF. So we start from a, from a PRF that has only a small domain, and we want to convert it into a bounded PRF. And the definition looks almost the same as, as the one for the real PRF. Again, we have an efficient distinguisher D that interacts with a black box. This box either contains a pseudorandom function or a real random function, depending on a random bit B. And it has to guess whether it's talking to a PRF or to the random function. But now the difference is that there's an upper bound on the number of queries that you can evaluate this. So you can really think of it as being a computational analog to L-wise independent functions. Another property that we, that we require from the bounded PRF, that it can be computed very efficiently namely logarithmic in the number of queries. So how can we go from, from, from a domain, from a PRF that only has a small domain to one that has a large domain? And here there are also several previous work that I just want to, want to show you briefly. So our starting point is the small domain PRF, and our goal is to get a bounded DRF via domain extension. So to be more concrete, the small domain could be, could be anything that has a polynomial input space, and we want to have, have a PRF with a large input space, but where the number of queries is a priori known. And this is our idea for our extension technique. It's very, very, very simple, actually. We start with a string of, of, a, of a large domain, and what we then do is we basically evaluate it on n universal has five hash functions. Okay, so the universal hash function maps from the large domain to the small, small domain, and we then feed this input into our small domain PRFs. Okay, and in the end, we take all of the inputs and XOR them together. So it's actually very, very simple, and let's think about why this could make sense. Just on an intuitive level, of course, for the full proof, see, please take a look at the paper. Well, first of all, what we can do, we know the number of queries in advance. So basically, we can say, okay, we have Q queries, and we can, or this is what we show, that at least one of the queries will be, will be independent of the others. And this means that there's an uncorrelated output that goes into a PRF. The output of it will be pseudorandom, and therefore the whole output will be pseudorandom as well. But in order to make the proof, there's a little subtlety. At some point, we have to go over the PRFs and say, well, we need this property, so start replacing them by random function. But if we do this step by step, basically we replace the first one, the second one, until the last one, then we are again running into a hybrid argument, and this, is, this, this wouldn't, wouldn't yield what we actually want. So here again, we're using a, a, a very simple, a simple trick, and the idea is that we're extending the domain of the small domain slightly. So the small domain is, the initial small domain is log L, where L is the number of queries, and we basically just encode which, which on which path we are and evaluate the PRF afterwards. And then we can basically replace the whole thing in one step without running into another hybrid argument. So now what we got is basically 
We started from a small domain PRF and we, and we went to bounded PRF. And now the next step is to go from the bounded PRF into full-fledged PRF. So let me briefly motivate the problem. One might, one might say, well, you can always say that the adversary only asked an upper bound on the queries. But the problem here is that, uh, that in, well, once you use the PRF, you have to fix this bound. And once you go beyond this bound, you just cannot say anything anymore. Security might be completely gone. So in our technique, we actually, what, what we would like to do, and that's why we call it on the fly, we can choose this value, this upper bound on the PRFs on the fly. So we have a fixed description on the function, and once we're giving an adversary in the proof, we can choose this value on the fly and argue that, argue that the, re the, the rest remains then random. And again, this, this construction, um, I think it's, 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 uh, it's very simple. The idea is basically that we start with the sequence of bounded PRFs, and we increase the size well, this upper bound on the number of queries exponentially. So the first one only supports two to the one, the second two to the two, and so on, until the last one handles two to the, log, two to the omega of log n queries. And then we evaluate all of these functions with the input x. We XOR the output together, and that's the final output of our full-fledged PRF. And this is also why we need the, the underlying small domain PRF to be, to be super easy to compute in order that the whole scheme remains computable in polynomial time. So similar technique has been used in a totally different context by Berman and Heitner to go from non-adaptive PRFs to adaptive PRFs. I would like to very briefly give you a, a very high-level idea of, of the proof. Well, the idea is basically that we can choose a certain value on the fly, and this is what we are doing. Once we're giving an adversary, we can basically fix a certain function, replace it by an L-wise independent hash function, and of course, then the argument is, since this, since this adversary doesn't go beyond this barrier, the, the output will remain pseudorandom. But in this picture, you already can see that the, that the technique uh, has a certain overhead, right? So basically, if you see on the left, then these functions are basically subsumed by the other ones. And if you look on the right, then you also see that for the security proof in order to, to work, I mean, they are not necessary anymore, right? We already have substituted this element by random function, so everything that is coming there for this specific adversary that we, we don't need. So our question was, well, if we, if we stick to specific number theoretic assumptions, can we do a little bit better? Can we avoid, can we avoid this? And what we will see if we look at groups where DDH is hard, then essentially we can avoid the first, the first part. So let's take a look at it. We, I'll, I'll just explain the construction based on DDH, and, and given this construction, you can easily derive the run from Kalin, but it's also written, written in the paper. So our starting point is the very beautiful now Rheingold PRF. And since the security reduction depends on, on the input space, which means if you have a large input space, you have a larger security loss, we're using this building block on a small domain. So how does now Rheingold work? Well, the key of the now Rheingold PRF consists of an elements A, S0, to S1, all from ZP. And what you do is you basically compute this value here. So you raise G to the A, and depending, depending on the input, on the binary input of X, you choose the value SJ. So you can basically think of it as a tree where SR are the nodes. Depending on the path of a tree, the, the bit basically selects which value is chosen here. So this is our starting point. The first step is to convert this one into a bounded PRF, and this is how our bounded PRF actually looks like. So now our input domain are not binary, small binary strings anymore, but our input points are, are elements from ZP. And we basically compute uh, almost the same, but now the product is over SJ plus X to the two to the J. And remember here, L is the upper bound on the number of queries that the adversary is allowed to ask. So first, I would like to convince you that this indeed tightly reduces to now Rheingold. So why is that? Well, we are taking our, 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 uh, our bounded PRF, and what we're doing is we're expanding the exponent. So basically, if you just look at the exponent that is computed as this, you basically can also rewrite it as at this. So it's basically the sum over, over C, where here the product is computed again over, 
from j0 to log l minus 1 of sj1 minus cj, and so on. So if you look at this very closely for a second, then, then you will see that, that here, here there's actually an old friend of us. That's now wrangled pair of embedded, the exponent embedded into it, okay? But now it's not for, for, for the value c, but it's the, it's the inversion, so it's the inversion of c. So let's change this a little bit and say we are running this part for all j0 to 2 to the l minus 1, and we are setting c as the binary bit representation of j. Then we essentially compute the same, the same function as follows. Basically what we're doing here is exactly what we did before. The sum now runs from 2 to the log l minus 1, and here inside is the now Rangold PRF based on the inversion of the binary presentation of j. So what we can do, do then in the proof is basically substitute this thing by, um, by a random function, and then what we get here is essentially an L-wise independent function. So that's the idea why our PRF tightly reduces to, to now Reinhold. And now the cool thing is what I promised before, we would like to have an on-the-fly adaptation technique that is more efficient. And if you look, what we, what we get is, is, um, is the following. Ah, at this point, I'm glad that I wrote it, I'd like to mention that the ob observation that this function can be computed in log L was previously observed by Benavas, Gennaro, and Valles for the now Rangel PRF and by Dario and Gennaro for the Luca Waters PRF. So the last step that we have to take is we basically have to go from the bounded, from the bounded PRF into the full-fledged PRF. And the only thing that we do is we change, we change the product here. We are not running, we are not running uh, to 2 to the log L minus 1, but we are now running to a value that is slightly, slightly super logarithmic. And why is this secure? And the high-level idea here is that we can just take this PRF and slice it into pieces, and basically, similar to what we did in the on-the-fly on the adaptation technique before, we are substituting a, a very specific bound by our, by our bounded PRF, basically the one that is slightly bigger than, than, um, than the number of, of, of queries the adversary will take. And then you can see that essentially embedded into the PRF is our bounded PRF that just runs to log L minus 1. And what the main part of the proof basically is, is to show is that you basically, in order to break the security, you have to guess the value here, and this happens only with negligible probability. So basically, to, to conclude this talk, I would like to, to summary what we have seen, and I would like to compare our construction with previous schemes. First of all, I've shown a generic transformation where you start from a small domain PRF, you convert it generically into a bounded PRF that can efficiently be computed, and then you further go into, into a full-fledged PRF. And if you just take this generic scheme and you apply it to the, to the, to the PRF based on LW, you already get a better PRF. But if you can use specific number theoretic properties, the algebraic properties in this group, then we can actually improve known schemes. So the famous now Rangold scheme, um, basically the key size is linear, and the security loss is linear in the input space. In contrast, our construction is more, more compact, and basically the key size is, is only logarithmic, and the proof, well, and then the security loss that we have with our proof only loses a logarithmic factor in, factor in the number of queries. Computation-wise, they're, they're almost the same. It's, it's really just a negligible fraction, unfortunately. But you can see the full power of reducing it if you look into, into the Kalin setting. Here we can see that the Luca Waters PRF, well, the computation consists of n matrix multiplications and one exponentiation. The key size is linear and the security loss as well. In contrast, our construction only needs a logarithmic many multiplications and an exponentiation, and the key size is, is just logarithmic and the security loss as well. And I would like to thank you for your attention. I hope you, you cite our paper, and I'm happy to take questions and, uh, and make a few advertisements for other works. Thank you. <laughs>